Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com, and welcome to the seventh part of our character animation tutorial series for After Effects. In the previous parts, we already created a pretty comprehensive character. When we animate the position of the character, the woman starts walking, the wheels are rotating, and the baby buggy even wiggles depending on its speed. In this part, we add some secondary animations that add more life to our character. Secondary animations are subtle animations that complement the much more visible primary animation. In our case, the primary animation is the walk cycle, and we want to add some secondary animations to it. First of all, in real life, people never stand 100% still. Hence, we add some overall subtle movement to the character. Furthermore, her chest should animate to simulate some breathing. And finally, we also want her hair to swing a bit when she is walking. Let's start with the easiest part, the basic overall motion. For this, we want to slightly wiggle the body. This body null layer is the layer in our rig that controls the position of the main body part. But we cannot apply a wiggle to its position since the position already has a walk cycle expression applied. This is because the walk cycle slightly moves the body up and down while she is walking. To preserve the walk cycle motion and add a wiggle on top of that, we create a new null layer and call it body wiggle. Now we insert it into the parenting chain between the body layer and its parent. In other words, we parent the body wiggle to the parent of the body, which is the character master, and then we parent the body itself to the body wiggle. Now we choose a wiggle expression in the eye expressions library. Since a person wiggles mostly backwards and forwards, and much less up and down, we choose the separate wiggle 2D, which allows us to control wiggling in X and Y direction separately. Since we want slow motions, we set the frequency to one wiggle per second, and let's say we wiggle 10 pixels left and right and only one pixel up and down. As you can see, the woman now moves her body a bit randomly, but this is still a bit intense. We want the secondary animations to be really subtle. Hence, we reduce the wiggle in X direction to 5 pixels. Now it is looking good. Notice that the wiggle also wiggles the body when she is walking. Although this is barely noticeable, this adds a little bit of variation to the footsteps and makes it feel less mechanical. If your character is not pulling a baby buggy, you can also add some wiggle to the hand goals to add some random motion to the hands. Now let's take care of the breathing. We do this directly on the puppet pin effect that connects our skin with the skeleton. Hence, we reveal the skin layers of the woman with Zorro and take a look at the puppet pin effect of the layer Character Body. It includes some puppet pins that animate the skirt and one pin at the chest. We add another pin at the chest and name it Pin Breathing. Now we animate the pin with a few keyframes so that it looks like she is breathing. I overdo the effect here a little so that you can see it better. Usually it is better to keep these animations barely noticeable. Now we could copy our breathing frames many times to make our breath for the entire duration of the composition, but this is very tedious and makes it hard to change our keyframes later. Instead, we use the loop eye expression from the movement modifier bundle. This expression is very easy to use. Just apply it to the pin or any other property you want it to loop, and it automatically loops the region between the first and the last keyframe. As you can see, our keyframe breathing animation now loops automatically. The expression has various advanced features like creating seamless transitions, but we don't need them here. If you want to know more about the loop eye expression, you can click the help icon to open its description, which also includes a tutorial showing all parameters in detail. Finally, we animate the hair of our character. For this, we add a puppet pin effect with three pins to it. We only want to animate the pin at her hair tips. The other pins stabilize the rest of her head. We name the pin at the hair tips, hair tips pin, and in order to animate it, we create a new null with the name hair tips extra pin and place it at the location of the pin. Then we parent it to the head of the character to ensure that it always moves with it. Now we use the soft link puppet pin to layers eye expression to connect the hair to the null. In part two of this tutorial series, we already used this expression to animate her skirt. For the skirt, it was very useful that the expression can link a puppet pin to several layers simultaneously. Now we make use of another feature of this flexible expression. We only link the pin to one layer, but we do it with a time delay. For this, we just enter the name of the layer that the pin should be linked to, and in the options we choose a time delay of four frames. Now we select the position of the pin and apply the expression to it. Now the hair tips are at the position where they would actually have been four frames ago. 
This delay makes the hair react to any movement with a certain sluggishness. If we exaggerate the effect with a delay of 8 frames, you can see it even better. If you want to lower the influence of the time delay, you can also enter our hair tips extra pin at the parameter layer 2 again. Set its weight to 1, but keep its time delay at 0 frames. This means our puppet pin is influenced by both the position where it was 8 frames ago and the position where it is now. By increasing or decreasing the weight of the two layers, you can give the time delay more or less influence. That's the end of our character animation tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed the training and got some useful insights about how to make your character animations more realistic and more efficient. Again, this is Eric D. Kirk from MamaWorld.com, and we'll see you down the road.